he, after several falls at home, he was um, admitted to the Leicester Royal Infirmary Casualty Department on Friday the 21st of December um, and he moved to Ward 24. Uh, he moved to uh, Evington House, which is a rehabilitation ward at the Leicester City General on the 27th of December. Um, he returned home on Tuesday the 8th of January and he, uh, my sister and brother uh, raised concerns that there was no care package in place um, and he was then admitted to um, the Leicester Royal Infirmary at St. Emergency again. So, so he was moved to Melton Mowbray Hospital Rehabilitation Centre on Friday the 25th of January. 30 minutes later they arranged for him to be returned to Leicester Royal Infirmary because the lady that I, the nurse I spoke to there said there was in no way should he have been moved. Um, she said he got pneumonia, he got chest infection, she thought he got sepsis. So she stabilised him and we're grateful to her because I think had it not she not done that, he would have gone at the time. Um, so she stabilised him, she put in a, a drip um, for him and also an antibiotic drip and sent him straight back to the Leicester Royal Infirmary. Um, so he was admitted to A&E again and they said he was ill, he'd got pneumonia and dehydration which obviously didn't come on 30 minutes after he'd been moved out and sent all the way out to uh, Melton Mowbray. Uh, he'd also got a water infection and so he was delirious um, and because obviously they didn't have the, they don't have doctors at the weekends at the rehabilitation centres and that's why they'd moved him but she said he would need to have gone back anyway because of how bad he was. Um, so he returned by ambulance to the infirmary, went into accident emergency on Friday the 25th of January into the critical care unit. Then he was admitted to Ward 29. Whilst he was in Ward 29, the um, doctor and the junior doctor noticed that he seemed to be in pain, which he had been all the way through. And remembering he'd had the fall and that was why initially he went in, they found he got a hairline that he got a fracture of his spine. Um, he was then um, discharged to St Luke's uh, Hospital Rehabilitation Clinic at Market Harbour. Um, and then they advised us that they'd sent him back to the Leicester Royal Infirmary because he had pneumonia. So then he was in the Extreme Frailties Unit um, until mid-morning. And when I went to visit him, he was curled up in bed. They couldn't straighten him out, which I said, this is because he's obviously of his back. They knew nothing about his back. So he then um, went back to Market Harbour. And he then, my brother had a phone call at nine o'clock the same day to say that they were sending him to Kettering because he was still so ill and they couldn't have him there because of how ill he was with no doctors, obviously, to sort it out. So then uh, he went to Kettering. They said he got high temperature, which seemed, you know, I know temperatures can come on quickly, but um, that was all within the space of 24 hours. He'd gone in the middle of the night to the Leicester Royal Infirmary and back again and moved again. Um, Kettering ran my brother on Thursday the 28th of February to advise that he'd taken a turn for the worse. Um, he spoke to the doctor um, and advised that he was going on the Friday. Um, he went to visit him on the Friday, he said he was curled up in bed and he said he just looked so ill, so really, really ill. And then he had a phone call at 3.40am to advise that he'd worsened and they didn't think that he was going to make it. And um, my brother um, managed to get there for 4.40, but he'd actually died five minutes after they rang. And for somebody, like I say, who's 94 years old, uh, yes, you could say, well, he was elderly, but he, he'd been fit and well up until there. Um, and the treatment, it, it's we're not talking about the medical treatment necessarily, but it's the care. There was no care, not for somebody like that. He, we just wanted him to be, uh, you know, we knew not the first time he went in because we thought he would recover. But when you realised as it went on, he wasn't recovering because of his treatment. We just wanted him to be comfortable and warm and cared for. We just don't want it to happen to anybody else. Mm. Anybody else's, you know, loved one. To see it happen to somebody is awful to, you know, every day go. He didn't know where he was in the end. And 
somebody who's got a broken back, basically, to be moved. Obviously, each time he was moved from his bed to a trolley, into an ambulance, to either, say, from Leicester Royal Infirmary, either to Market Harbour or to Melton Mowbray, um, and to then be taken back off um, there and put in a bed, or if he came back from there to the infirmary, he was put on a, an accident in the emergency trolley, then moved to the ward and then moved on to a bed. The last thing he said to my sister when she went to see him was, I'm done for. And that's what she said.